Now, job applications have gone in for one of the most high-profile jobs in the world. The decisions he or she makes will, in one way or another, have an influence on you. The World Trade Organization is searching for a new director general. Eight candidates have been nominated from across the globe. So what exactly, though, is the WTO? Well, it was formed in 1994 with headquarters in Geneva in Switzerland. This is the largest international economic organization in the world, which currently has the Brazilian Roberto Azevedo at its helm, its sixth director general. Now, its main function is in dealing with the global rules of trade, things like ensuring that trade flows as smoothly, predictably and as freely as possible between member countries. It undertakes the negotiations and really, importantly, dispute resolution. Of its 164 members, 44 are African. Now that's the largest number from one region and only Ethiopia and Sudan remain outside of this group, although they are in the process of joining. So. With those figures in mind, is it time for African leadership of the organization? Well, three of the eight candidates are from Africa. Our business editor, Zawadi Mudibo, spoke to those three and put them through their paces. The director general role is an administrative role to oversee surveillance of trade trends globally, adjudicate trade disputes and the negotiation of trade agreements. The World Trade Organization is a multilateral trading system that was enacted in 1995. It not only deals with global rules of trade, but also ensures there is a free flow in a smooth and predictable manner. Dr. Ngozi, good to see you. Why do you want to become the Director General of the WTO? I think it's because I have a passion for my profession, development economics, of which trade is a very important part of it. So throughout my career, I've worked on economic policy reforms, including trade policy reforms, both at the World Bank and even as finance minister in my own country. I was, as a uh, legal counsel, was in charge of the drafting and the negotiation of the first groundbreaking uh, international agreement on trade and services. So if I can mobilize all that to the disposal of the membership and make a contribution to putting the, the, the WTO back on track, that would be uh, my, my, my utmost hope at this point. I call myself the plug in and play um, a candidate that is ready to hit the ground uh, running. Uh, but I also was uh, very privileged and, and fortunate. Uh, we negotiated and, and agreed on, on an agreement um, that prohibited uh, export subsidies. It was something that had been negotiated for 15 years without any result. Uh, but we got the result in, in, in Nairobi under my, under my chairmanship. In April, the World Trade Organization said global trade would fall by up to 30% this year as COVID-19 disrupts normal economic activity. The question is, do these African candidates have a plan? The issue is, what trade regime and what trade rules should govern access to supplies and, and vaccines. These are things we should be talking about at the ministerial. Many countries put export restrictions. How do we lift those and make sure that we don't have a situation in future where countries find barriers in accessing life-saving medicine or equipment? In the short term, the WTO should um, be focused on um, transparency, making sure that all the measures, trade measures that are taken in response to the pandemic, <clears throat> to the crisis, are being notified, transparent, consistent with WTO rules and time bound. Any restrictions imposed because of the pandemic would have to be time bound and according to the rule. Transparency must be adhered to, uh, that measures um, uh, that would restrict trade must be removed and that governments needed to, uh, to work together. Yeah? Uh, you know, so that's the role that uh, trade plays um, uh, because I mean, it, it, it cannot come up with a vaccine, uh, uh, but it can allow for free movement, a free flow of the equipment, of the medicine that is required. Well, there you have it. The campaign period ends on the 7th of September, and the 164-member organization will begin to whittle down all the eight candidates to one. It is expected there will be a new director general in November. Zawadim Dibo, BBC, Nairobi.
Well, joining me now uh, is David Luke, the coordinator of the African Trade Policy Center at the UN Economic Commission for Africa, and uh, joins us from the Ghanaian capital, Accra. Thank you very much for speaking to us. Um, first off, just how significant is this post? Um, firstly, uh, Luquesa, thank you once again for having me on your program. Uh, it is an important post. It's not uh, a post that uh, makes executive decisions. Uh, that is for the membership of the WTO. But it's an influential post. It has a bully pul pulpit. And uh, it's a post that could bring uh, uh, people together, could bring um, negotiators together to ensure that uh, uh, some good trade deals that benefit the world are made. And we asked the question, you know, is it time for an African to be at the helm? Uh, as well as an answer to that, why does this matter to Africans? Um, I think uh, the institutions of global governance uh, can be seen as uh, being legitimate uh, if uh, the um, uh, top posts uh, represent uh, the, um, uh, the, the world at large, the, uh, the world's population. Um, so I think uh, from that point of view, it's a good thing to have um, broad representation at the uh, top of these uh, organizations. But for Africa specifically, as I said, this is a post that is influential. Um, it's a post that has a bully pulpit. Uh, Africa is in the middle of, um, of trade reforms uh, through the African continental free trade area. So I think that the uh, director general can use that bully pulpit to ensure that um, these reforms are carried out, the important reforms at the border that can affect ordinary Africans, uh, such as um, uh, reducing uh, red tape at the border, uh, reducing the paperwork at the border, uh, ensuring that uh, there's less corruption at the border, eliminating corruption at the border, uh, you know, those sorts of things which can impact small traders mm. and uh, can impact uh, poverty significantly on, on, on the continent. I mean, we are living in unprecedented times. When you look at what's going on with the influence that China has, with the US, at, um, with President Trump uh, leading the country, I mean, what sort of shape is the WTO in? Is it fit for purpose for today's reality? You know, certainly one of the challenges um, for the incoming director general is to deal with these uh, issues, uh, to deal with um, uh, the uh, bottlenecks uh, the, in, in, in rulemaking at the WTO, in negotiations, to deal with um, the bottleneck at the level of the dispute uh, settlement uh, process. Uh, these are all issues uh, where uh, big powers have not seen eye to eye. And uh, you need to have the director general using that influence to uh, move the uh, uh, the agenda al along. You know, suddenly uh, it's um, it's a it's a position uh, of immense uh, geopolitical significance, and um, we are very proud that Africa has put forward three excellent candidates. I don't think there is any doubt about yeah. that. And the WTO is a place of nuance. I think the fact that we have three excellent candidates. Uh, um, uh, that can uh, withstand the penetrating scrutiny that is to be expected. Uh, okay. I think that's, that, that's good for Africa. We'll leave it there because I'm sure we'll be talking to you once we find out who does get that post. David Luke, for now, thank you very much indeed. Uh, thank you too, Professor. Thank you. Thank, thank you. you.